But one of the most memorable moments in Masters history came in 1987 when 28-year-old Larry Miles crushed Greg Norman's dreams when he chipped in on the 11th hole during the playoff to win the green jacket. With the victory, Miles earned a lifetime exemption into the Masters. But this week, he confirmed that the 2023 event will be his last. And he compiled an impressive record over the years. Larry Mize, he's about to make his 40th appearance. Since that win 36 years ago, he's made 20 cuts, 11 top 25 finishes, three top 10s, including finishing third back when Jose Maria Olathabal won in 1994. And we're pleased to be joined now by Larry Mize. Larry, thanks for joining us. You began working the scoreboard as a teenager at Augusta National. Did you ever think or allow yourself to dream that 40 years later you would leave as the owner of a green jacket? Uh, the dreams never got the, quite that far. You know, I dreamed of playing in the tournament, but to dream I'd be playing in it 40 years later. No, I never, never did dream that. Why is now the right time to cap it at 40, Larry? Well, it, it's, as you all know, it's a young man's golf course. Uh, you do not get longer as you get older. You get shorter, and the course has gotten longer. And Augusta National has done a phenomenal job of keeping up with technology and these young kids getting strong and hitting the ball so far. And the course really plays great for them, but it doesn't play great for me. So it's it's time for me to have my last week there, and uh, and then I'll enjoy coming back for the Champions Dinner in Part Three and uh, enjoying my time. At what point, Larry? Uh, we've seen this from a lot of great champions, even over the last decade, who, who've made the announcement that they're walking away. At what point for you did just making the cut on a golf course that long and difficult become a victory for the week? Well, that's a great question. I remember when I turned 50, I still thought I could compete. I still thought I had a chance to win the golf tournament, as crazy as that may sound it to some people. But as a competitor, you always believe you've got some lightning in there and something could happen. But as time went in, I started getting up in the 50s. It started to get to where the cut was the main thing. If I could make the cut and play all four days, it would be a nice week. So somewhere around mid-late 50s is when the realizing I was going to have a hard time contending anymore. It's been 36 years since you won the Masters, Larry. How many days in those 36 years have you managed to go without thinking about that chip-in shot? <laughs> uh, probably more, more than I should have. I probably should have thought about it more. Uh, uh, people bring it up and they always say, do you mind uh, talking about this? I go, no, it's a pretty good topic for me. So, But I don't think about it every day. I move on and I you know, probably moved on too quickly after the Masters to try and... Uh, you know, do something after that. So, but it's always great to come back and talk to y'all and reminisce about it. And, you know, I'm really excited about this coming April to play again. Larry, from 84 to 94, your first 11 Masters, you made the cut every year. You had three top six finishes. Of course, you slipped on the green jacket in 87. For you, it must have been a thrill just to get to that point where you were teeing it up at the Masters. What was that run like the first decade plus that you were? having that yearly tea time at Augusta? Well, it really was great uh, to be to be in contention, to have chances to win a couple of times like I did. Uh, you know, 90, 90, uh, 94 when Jose won, I played really well. Um, sometimes I think I played better than I did in 87. I just didn't make the putts that need to be made, and Jose played great. But it was fun. I mean, to get to go back there every April and to be considered someone who had a chance to win was a lot of fun. And I relished that time and it was a, a great 10 years for me and uh, just a great 10 years. I loved it. Larry, you birdied the last hole of regulation in 1987 to get into that playoff. And there were two other guys in the playoff, Greg Norman, Seve Ballesteros. Were you conscious of the fact that you were going up against these two lions of the game and that you would have been widely perceived as the underdog in that situation? Oh, it's no doubt. Yes, I, I knew that. I mean, obviously, those are two great players and I had my hands uh, more than full with those two. But, you know, as a competitor, you, you still got to believe you can win and you relish going up against the best players in the world. I mean, that's what I, I, I love going up against whoever was tops. You know, Greg and I had a six-hole playoff in the Kemper Open the previous year in 86 and on the sixth playoff, Holy beat me. So I'd been in a playoff with Greg before, which helped. And Seve and I had played a lot of golf before. And, you know, I think we had a lot of respect for each other. So, and Birdie in that last hole gave me a lot of confidence going into to the playoff. You know, I played really well all week. To birdie the 72nd hole when I needed to was really a special memory for me as well as the chip in. So I went into the playoff uh, with a lot of confidence and butterflies, but 
but thank goodness they were flying in formation, so I felt pretty good. We rank 87 as one of the best masters all time. I mean, the back-to-back the -back of Jack in 86 and then the finish that you had in 87 was incredible. If you could give us your short list, what would you say maybe the, the top three masters finishes that you've seen? And you, you could obviously include yourself in 87. Well, obviously, 86, it doesn't get any better than that. I mean, to me, the, the greatest player of all time to win his six masters at the age of 46 with his son on the bag. I mean, how can that get any better? Um, there have been so many great ones. Uh, I can't help but think of Charles Schwartzel uh, birdieing the last four holes to win his Masters. That was a phenomenal finish that I don't know if anybody had ever done that before as well. And what would, an, another one, um, you know, I guess another one you think about would be Tiger winning uh, in 2019. If I got my years yeah. right when he came back to win there in 2019, it was an amazing win for Tiger to come back. So, uh, those are three that come to mind. I'm probably going to forget a bunch of them. There were so many. Um, you know, Tom Watson went in three times in Seve. And, of course, Langer's two wins were incredible when he had the lead in 95 and just went ahead and won. So, uh, But uh, the thing about Augusta, it seems like every year it's always special. Something about the golf course, the back nine, there's so much excitement with the water holes. It just always sets up for a ph phenomenal finish. Larry, you met, everyone you mentioned there has a place setting at the most exclusive dinner in this entire game, Tuesday night at Augusta National for the Champions Dinner. A lot of speculation this year, given the division at the top of golf with a half dozen former champions who have gone to live, some outspoken former masters, champions like Freddie Couple of, Couples opposed to that. Are you in any way having some trepidation about what the vibe will be like at the dinner this year? Do you think it's going to feel any different? Yeah, I sure hope not. You know, it's a night that I look forward to all year and I understand the the issues there I'm not I'm not happy with the live tour I don't think it's good for golf um I mean basically let's face it it's an exhibition tour and they can say all they want it's nothing more than that when you have a 54 hole tournament with no cut and you limit it it's just it's an exhibition tour it's a great exhibition tour but it's not good for golf so uh hopefully there won't be any uh problems that night and uh, we'll just have to wait and see you mentioned the, the six-hole playoff you had in 86 against Greg Norman at Kemper and then what happened at Augusta National. So in a way, your name, Larry, is always linked to his in the history books. Has your view of Greg changed over the last couple of years, given what's going on with this division in the game? Oh, you know, that's a great question. You know, Greg tried to do this, I think, back in 94. And uh, I guess Greg thinks he's doing what's best in his mind. Uh, Greg and I would just disagree with that. I would respectfully disagree with him and think this this is not good for the game of golf. And uh, Arnold Palmer said it back in '94 when they started it. Uh, you know, he and he said he and Jack and and uh, Gary they had chances to break away, and that's not in the best interest of golf. So I still stay with what Arnold says, and uh, you know, I just respectfully disagree with what Norman's doing. It's always great to check in with a man who's earned the most precious trophy in this game, a green jacket. And we look forward to saying goodbye a little more officially in a couple of months down the road, Larry. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much. It's great to be with you all.